Welcome to grade uh, 10 mathematics and welcome to mathematics with M's. The real number system part 1. Don't forget again to give me a huge like and to subscribe. Let's start off with a revision of the real number system. Revision of basically grade 8 and 9 mathematics. Now, in grade 9, you've learned about real numbers, which consists of rational and irrational numbers. So, let's briefly revise these numbers. Let's first look at rational numbers. Now, a rational number is a number that can be expressed in the form A over B, where, of course, B not equals to 0, and, of course, where A and B are integers. Rational numbers include all the following numbers which can be expressed as a common fraction. Integers, whole numbers and natural numbers. For example, 6 is 6 over 1, negative 2 is negative over 1, 0 is 0 over 1. Mixed numbers, for instance 2 and a half, 5 over 2, where 5 and 2 are integers. Terminating decimals, for instance, 0, 0,1 to 5, which counts from 1 eighth. Recurring decimals, for instance, 0, 0,1 recurring, 0, 0,111 to infinity, or maybe 0, 0,525252. 5 5 as long as there's a pattern and it's recurring, then we consider it as rational. Irrational numbers are non-terminating, non-recurring decimals. So they cannot be expressed as a ratio between integers. Examples include the square root of numbers that are not perfect squares. For example, the square root of 2, the square root of 6, the square root of 8, or cube root of numbers that are not perfect cubes. For instance, the cube root of 2, cube root of 5, cube root of 9. I suggest that at this stage, use your calculator and just check the answers to these numbers. The following number line contains a few real numbers. But remember, there are real numbers and there are non-real numbers, don't forget. For instance, if you look at negative 1,5, that is a rational number and it's also a real number. Look at negative 1, it's an integer, a rational number, and a real number. Look at 0, it's a whole number, integer, rational, and real. Look at uh, the decimal 2 thirds, it's a rational number, and it's real. Squ look at uh, the square root of 2, it's irrational, and a real number. Look at 2, natural number, whole number, an integer, rational, and real. The value of pi, irrational number, real number. Yeah, remember pi is irrational because it's non-terminating. Not all calculations will produce real numbers. There are such examples as the square root of a negative number. You can try this on your calculator and you will notice that it, there, is, there are no solutions to the square root of negative numbers. So they do not exist. Or division by zero does not produce a real number. So please check this on the calculator and make double sure. Now, if you look at this diagram I have, it shows you the real number system. But remember, it consists of the imaginary or so-called non-real numbers, like the square root of a negative number and division by zero. And then on the other side, you get your real numbers. Take note, you get irrational and rational. Please make sure you understand this diagram because it is very important. Right, so let's look at the summary of the real number system now. So number one, natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to infinity, whole numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to infinity, integers, from, in, from negative infinity, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, to past infinity. So, so far, no fractions. Take note, natural, whole, and integers do not have fractions. 
Then we go to the natural numbers, that is the fraction A over B, whole numbers and integers, proper fractions, improper fractions and mixed numbers, terminating decimals and recurring decimals. And then number five, the irrational numbers, non-terminating, non-recurring decimals, square root of numbers that are not perfect squares, cube, roots of numbers that are not perfect cubes, etc. And also the value of pi. Number six, the real numbers, any number of the number line, all rational and irrational numbers put together. And then number seven, calculations that do not produce real numbers, like the square root of negative numbers and division by zero. Let's look at a few examples. State whether the following numbers are rational, irrational, or neither. Let's look at a 0 0.25. Look at the solution. It is rational and it, because it's a terminating decimal. B, negative 2, it is rational. C, pi plus 6, irrational, because the sum of an irrational number and a rational number is always irrational. Square root of 10, irrational. 10 is not a perfect square, therefore the square root of 10 is irrational. E, square root of negative 16, of course, 16 is a perfect square, but a square root of a negative number is non-real, so it's neither. F, the square root of 16, rational. 16 is a perfect square, therefore the square root of 16 is rational. Right, next one is G, 0, is a rational because it's a whole number. H, 5 divided by 0, neither, because division by 0 is undefined. I, 0.5432158 and, and so forth. Yeah, right? If you look at the solution, it's rational because it's a recurring decimal. There's a pattern. J, 0.7931156 and so forth. Right? Of course, it is irrational because it is a non-terminating, non-recurring decimal. K, the cube root of a negative 27 is rational because this equals to negative 3. And negative 3 is an integer, and an integer is rational. N number uh, L, the, the cube root of a negative 9, irrational, since cube roots of negatives are real, but since 9 is not a perfect square, the cube root of negative 9 is irrational. M, pi divided by 3, irrational. Any fraction of an irrational number is irrational. And n, the square root of 9 over 16, is rational. 9 and 16 are perfect squares. And the square root of 9 over 16, of course, is a three-quarter, which is a fraction. Right, let's look at the following two examples. Show that the following numbers are rational. Like 0, 0,1 recurring and 0, 1,75, both recurring. Let's first start with 0, 0,1 recurring. So, 0, 0,1 recurring can be shown to be rational by expressing it as a common fraction. So, let 0, 0,1 recurring be 0, 0,111111, etc. Now, the, what you need to do is simplify both sides. You can either by 10, 100, and 1,000, and so forth, to get the following equation. For instance, if you let x be equal to 0, 0,1111, multiply both sides by 10, and you get 10x equals to 1,1111. And if you multiply by 100, you get 11,1111. So you can decide. If you multiply by 1,000, you'll get 111,1111. So look for two equations where the decimals after the comma are the same, and then you subtract the two equations. So two equations where the decimals are the same after the comma are 2 and 1. Look at 2 and 1, right? And so subtract 1 from 2. So if you subtract those two equations, you get 9x equals to 1. So divide both sides by 9, and there you are. x equals to 1 over 9, which is a rational number. So if you look at b, a 1,75 recurring, then let x be 1,75, and so forth. Multiply both sides by 10, and then, or you can multiply both sides by 100, you can decide. Carefully consider the decimals of each line. It should be clear that the decimals of 2 and 1 are not the same. Take a note, they are not the same. Two equations where decimals are the same are, after the comma, are 3 and 1. Let's have a look at 3 and 1. 
So subtract 1 from 3. If you do that, you get 99x equals to 174. So divide both sides by 99, simplify, and you get 58 over 33, which is a rational number. It may be necessary in other cases to continue multiplying by 10 until you have established that the decimals to the right of the comma are equal. At this stage, I would advise you to check the answer whether it is really the original fraction. It is useful to take note of a few patterns regarding the some recurring decimals and the equivalent fractions like 0, 0,1 recurring is 1 ninth, 0, 0,2 recurring is 2 ninths, 0, 0,3 recurring is 3 ninths, etc. 0, 0,13 is 13 over 99, 0, 0,25 recurring is 25 over 99, 0, 0,76 recurring is 76 over 99. Surely you can pick up a pattern. Yes, uh, 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 exercise I would like you to have a look at so I will advise you to carefully and slowly work through the entire exercise because that will make sure that you understood the lesson I hope that you have enjoyed this lesson and don't forget to give me a huge like and to subscribe I'll see you in the next video this is Ahmed Suleiman from Mathematics with Amps.